Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. Today I'm going to explain how to save the game, how to save the game data. Um, it's nothing very complicated, but um, we will do it um, actually wh when you play. The user can pause the game by default with the D key. So if I press D, um, my character stops, my hero stops, and uh, I cannot move anymore because it is the game is paused. So this is the uh, default built-in uh, pause system. It's very minimalistic, of course, and in a real game you will be able to uh, customize the, uh, to make a pause menu with maybe an inventory, a map. Uh, uh, an options menu, whatever. But uh, by default, it's just that. So um, in this episode, we will going to will um, make a dialog box that asks if the player wants to save. And this dialog box will appear when the game when the player puts pauses the game. Okay. If I press D again, the game is unpaused. Um, so, let's see the um, game manager script. Or maybe first we can write a dialog actually. So, create a new dialog, we will call it pause.save question. Um, the dot is a, a separator in the dialog, the R key here. And Dialog with we just say do you want to save the game? And there will be two possible answers. Yes and no. Okay. So I have a few things to explain, of course. The Zelda a link to the past resource pack now contains the uh, dialog box system very similar to to the Zelda one. Um, it was not, not the case when I recorded the previous tutorial, tutorial 8. But now if you have the updated resource pack you should have the dialog box of A Link to the Past. And so yeah, if you don't have it, just download the latest version and add the script. Uh, actually, you need to update all scripts. There are some new, uh, new organization. And feel free to ask if you have any problem. But uh, yeah, now we have a real nice dialog box system, uh, very similar to the, the the one of A Link to the Past, with a frame and gradual letters. We can see that if I open the same map as in chapter 8. Here is it. Here is the dialog box. Okay, and uh, di this dialog box script also supports um, asking questions to the player. And it recognizes this particular syntax um, dollar and question mark. This will be replaced by a cursor. So, okay, let's try it. Um, and by the way, th this rule is, this uh, convention is specific to this particular script. The engine does not uh, impose anything about uh, how to ask questions to the player or how the dialog box should look. Okay, so back to game manager. Um, this is the function that creates a game, and we will use the event on paused. So, whenever the player pauses the game, which by default is with the D key of the keyboard, this event is called. So that's nice for us. 
we can show the dialog and there is a function to do just that start dialog first parameter is the ID of the dialog so you can copy paste from here to be sure that there is no mistake and uh, okay um, this function you can read the documentation but it just starts the dialog and it returns immediately so if I press D okay I have the dialog, I have the cursor here, and I should be able to move the cursor. Okay, nice. Of course, for now, uh, nothing happens if I select any of the answers. And, oh, yeah. Other problem. After the dialog box closes, the game is still paused because we didn't unpause the game so let's do just that there is a function set paused false um, but as I was saying this function is called um, returns immediately and so how to execute code after it closes, actually there is a second parameter. It's optional, but it is a function. It's a parameter, a value of type function that you provide and that the engine will call later. When exactly? Well, when the dialogue ends. So this is the right time to unpause the game um, okay and maybe we can play a sound to indicate that uh, we validated the dialogue I chose the sound danger because it's used for several things in Link to the Past. It's, it's this one. It is a very annoying repetitive uh, sound when the player is in danger with very low life. So if we call this dialogue starts and we will hear that the danger sound is played only when the dialogue is finished. Yes, no. Okay, and we heard the sound after, so this is a callback function. Uh, maybe you are familiar with this, depending on uh, what kind of programming languages you know. But um, they are very useful in, in Solaris. Very often we call a function that uh, exits immediately to allow the, of course, the simulation to continue and you you give some code to be called later when something finishes so okay uh, and the last thing we need to do of course is the most important is to actually save the game but only if the player answered yes so how do we do that well there is a also a parameter in your callback so and the parameter is the answer. This means that when the dialogue ends, the dialogue box script, and, and you can see this script, it's quite complicated because there's a lot of things to handle, uh, displaying letters gradually, uh, asking questions, recognizing this, etc. But uh, yeah, when the dialogue ends, the dialog box system provides the the, ans the answer if there was a question as a parameter to your callback and the answer is a uh, value of type number and it can be one two three or four depending on the line of the cursor uh, th four is the maximum because the size of the dialog box is four lines 
Okay, so here if the answer is 2, we want to save the game. If answer equals 2, then game save. End. Okay. And this should be it. And why not play the sound in both cases? Both, both cases. Do you want to save the game? Yes or no? And it will be saved in a very specific folder, which is your personal directory, followed by dot solaris, the dot solaris directory. And then the write directory that you set in the properties here uh, to make it unique to avoid conflicts with other Solaris games, other Solaris quests that might be installed in the on the computer of, of your, your users. So in this example tutor quest EN Zelda. So here it is. The folder is empty for now. And if I save, let's try to find the, the right one, not the other one. If I save, yay, a file, a save game file just appeared. So you can open it. It's actually a text file and everything is very understandable. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, it's it's just a list of key value pairs. Oops. And all all values all keys names that start with underscore are handled by the engine automatically. And your scripts, your quest can add some more. But uh, here, when I save the game the first time, I only have engine values like. Uh, the fact that I, I have the first tonic, I have 12 points of life and uh, that uh, the keyboard commands are these, etc. Um, why do I have tw 12 points of life? Is because my script here, initial game script, decided to put 12 points of life. Okay. And now if I take the the, sh the shield that we did in episode number 8 uh, number 6, sorry, I don't even remember doesn't matter Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, it was in number 8 and this is episode number 9 uh, yeah, so whatever. If I save, my file sh should have changed. And there is a new value here saying that the shield is now in position state 2. Um, and this variable is called like this because it, was, it is what the script of the shield decided. Here, self set save game variable position shield. Okay. So, um, it, in a real game, you you will have a lot more values. Uh, maybe I can open one. Uh, what is this? Other documents. If I check this game. I still have the engine stuff and then a lot a lot of uh, values saved by various scripts or entities so um, if you read the documentation of save games so it's in the game type game the first uh, paragraph of the overview is actually about what can be saved. So, a lot of stuff, some stuff, <laughs> saved by the engine. 
it these are the the key values key and values starting by an, an underscore in the file okay I already closed it but I showed you earlier and then you can add any key value pair uh, just by calling game set value which is very easy to use you uh, the value is all the key is always a string so the name of your variable and the value can be a string a number or a boolean um, okay so it's enough for this episode if you have any question feel free to ask um, and yeah please like the video it it also it always keeps uh, make me keep motivation of course for new tutorials I have a lot of ideas for for next tutorials <laughs> there should be a lot of videos okay thank you all for watching see you next time bye